This is a direct and deliberate smear against Christianity. Do you think they would do this ad campaign in July? Well, do you think they, Are you do, kidding me? Do you think me? they would do it against Allah at Ramadan? I, I don't, don't think so. I don't think so. But no, they're because, only no. doing this. They're only doing this on purpose in December. Okay, but wait, wait, wait. And this is the so most. So why does the American Christians. Humanist Society, who wants to be good for goodness' sake, why do they loathe the baby? Jesus, he's just because they a baby. see a movement brewing. Have you looked at the polls recently? More and more Americans are atheists or agnostic, and they're seeing that growing movement, and they're getting right on the bandwagon. Well, you don't and sell atheism Christians by running down a baby, do you? Year. This clip just shows the serious misunderstanding that Christians seem to have about Christmas. Atheists celebrate Christmas. Because while it is a religious holiday for religious people, it is a secular holiday for the rest of us. They cannot hold a copyright on Christmas because almost all of it is a celebration of several pagan festivals including Norse Yule, Celtic Solstice, and Roman Saturnalia. Most of all, Yule. This is a tradition brought over by German immigrants to this country, just as Halloween was brought over by Irish immigrants. Christmas wasn't even celebrated in the U.S. until the mid-1800s because it was considered a pagan drinking holiday of revelry. Thomas Jefferson was heard saying that he wished the U.S. celebrated Christmas as Congress worked a full day on Christmas just like it was every other day. With a flood of German immigrants and Dickens A Christmas Carol, the celebration of Christmas or Yule soon spread like wildfire. One of the interesting things about pagan holidays is that pagans are polytheists, which means that unless there is a political agenda, all polytheists have to be secular because they accept all gods' existences. The Norse had no beef with Christians until the church began messing with their lives. Because of this, anyone can celebrate a pagan holiday whether they believe it or not. The purpose of Yule was designed as a survival tradition in a very cold and icy Scandinavia. During the winter, you are cramped up in a house with cabin fever and a bunch of family members and relatives that you can't stand. There is also lower sunlight causing depression, which will add to everyone's nerves fraying. Yule was made as a celebration to lift the spirits and establish goodwill, mostly to prevent everyone from killing each other. Yule was a 12-day celebration that ended at the last day of the year which may or may not have been on the 31st or the 25th, depending on what the tribe followed and what calendar they went with. Gifts were exchanged and food was pulled out of storage to raise spirits and give hope to the restless inhabitants of the house that, yes, this winter would eventually be over. Yule truly was about peace on earth, goodwill toward men, as if they hadn't, they may have killed each other. ...metaphor for the human condition cramped together on this tiny planet and we must spread goodwill and understanding or we will kill each other. So straight off the bat, if Christmas is a Christian holiday, you can't sing the 12 days of Christmas and we can easily change any lyric from Christmas to Yuletide. Yes, the Magi brought gifts, but they gave gifts to Jesus, which means that Christmas should be more like Boxing Day, a British holiday that occurs the day after Christmas where people would box up their old things and give them to the poor. Or they should give money to the church because apparently that's what Jesus likes. It's giving to Jesus. Giving gifts to children who did nothing to earn it teaches socialism. Next stop, the Christmas tree. The Yule tree was there to remind them that yes, there was life and greenery that would be again around in spring. It was also a symbol of the pagan world tree. They would also usually revere the tree as holy and spiritual. Also, there's the following passage in Jeremiah. If you want Christmas to be truly Christian holiday, you have to throw out the tree, as the Bible says it's evil. An interesting Scandinavian idea is that of the Yule goat. A good explanation for this practice was because Thor's goat could be eaten and then resurrected. A great way to remember that yes, spring would come and revive itself again. One thing to remember is that there was no canon for most polytheistic religions, like Christians have with the Bible. Depending on the tribe, the beliefs had variations. The Yule goat served several purposes. In some tribes, the goat would play tricks on it if you didn't give him treats. In another, he would show up early to make sure the Yule plans went on schedule. Yet another, the goat would bring presents to good children, which parents would dress up pretending to be. 
And then, of course, with others, the goat would draw Thor's chariot and bring gifts to good little children. Sound familiar? In fact, straw goats in modern Scandinavia are used as holiday decorations, and they have a major problem with arson, especially on government property. The Christmas ham was a sacrifice to the god Frey, so Christians, you better drop that. Mistletoe was also a symbol of peace, and when two warriors met under a tree for battle that had mistletoe, their belief stated that peace should be made. Also, as it was green in winter, it was a sign of the blessings of Frigga, and anyone who kissed under it on Yuletide would have a peaceful relationship for the rest of the year. Wassailing, or caroling, was also called going Yule Goat, where people would go around the village, usually getting inebriated, and singing to bring cheer to the people in their village. Remember, there were no iPods or even records back in those days, so singing from anyone was usually appreciated, which they reciprocated with food, sweets, and drink. So Christians, I hate to say this, but you've been celebrating two holidays, not one. The birth of Christ and the pagan holiday Yule. Because of this, you made Yule and Christmas synonymous and interchangeable. So when I as an atheist celebrate Christmas, I'm just returning the favor you gave to me. Unless you eliminate all parts of Yule from your holiday, the tree, the giving, 12 days, ham, mistletoe, and caroling, I'm going to keep referring to both Yule and Christmas interchangeably as a matter of convenience. The only tradition your religion has, which is not pagan, is the birth of Christ, which is a nice story that many other religions have, such as Krishna, Horus, and Mithras. If you want to celebrate that and not have any paganism, have your nativity, maybe a Christmas lamb, to think about the shepherds and the lamb of God being killed for your sins, because your God really loves blood. Also, you can keep eggnog. Eggnog, lamb, dinner, nativity, and church. That's your Christmas. It sounds really enjoyable, doesn't it? If you want to celebrate Yule with us and the rest of America, regardless of your religion or ethnicity, feel free to, because it's cold. And while it's a pagan holiday, we need to spread peace on Earth and goodwill towards men on this cramped planet of ours, or we will end up destroying ourselves. Also, did I mention, it's freaking cold. Hey, guys. <laughs> Just as soon as I was finishing up this video, um... <laughs> Uh, I noticed on Yahoo News that apparently the Yule Goat was once again burned in Sweden. Here's a picture of it for you. Um, apparently the quotation was, it looks more like a, a terrier than a goat now. Um, anyway, guys, uh, as I said, they have a lot of problems with arson with their Yule Goats. Um, have a joyous, a joyous Yule and Merry Christmas. Uh, Happy Hanukkah and a blessed solstice, whatever you want to have. See ya.